Hey, welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith with. It's the interview series presented by WFPK at WFPK.org, Consequence, and the Consequence Podcast Network. Thanks, as always, for making your way here and checking out the series. You know what to do. Like what you see, what you hear. Hit that subscribe button. I put out uh, three new interviews every single week, so it's a great way to keep up with your favorite artists. And I am so excited today. Our ring are back. Kelly Deal, Mike Montgomery. Hello, you all. Hi. Hi. Nice to be here. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's it's great to see you both. Uh, new record. It's called uh, War Poems. We rested. Uh, it's so much fun to listen to. I mean, this is a... Uh, this is the this is the record that the only record I want to play right now. So oh. let's just you know congratulations on that right right off the bats. Oh, thank so you. Much. Really appreciate yeah, it. Man. Yeah. So so let's talk about this album. Um, you know, it, it has been six years. I know there was a little pandemic that got in the way in the middle of it, and uh, and also we're, I, I want to say because you just joined, uh, we, we've got uh, we've got Matt Hart here as well, who's a part of this concept too. I want to say hi to Matt real quick. Hello. Hey, how are you? <laughs> All right. Uh, we're going to be throwing it your way here in a minute, but but as I was uh, as I was saying, uh, so it's it's been a few years. I know there's a pandemic in the middle, but uh, but when did this record start happening again? What's where where does this album start for you all? Kelly, do you want to go or do you want me to? Well, I mean that's a, that's an interesting take on it because it kind of started. One of the songs is back from before Ignite the Rest, our previous um, our previous record. So it's interesting that. Some, you know, it's always like a continual thread of like, you know, playing, writing, you know, readdressing songs, backing away from them because they suck and I suck and I need to quit the band and I need to quit music business. And then you're like, oh, I've just made a breakthrough on this song. Isn't that fun? So, yeah. <laughs> um, so we've been carrying some of the songs with us and, you know, we uh, got busy. I got busy with the breeders and um, we kept, uh, Mike and I would, would record with uh, Mike recorded a lot of the breeders uh, material um, all nerve uh, mm -hmm. the last record in his studio Candyland recording studios which is in Dayton Kentucky very close to where you guys are um, but yeah so we uh, started working on it then and we just kind of uh, worked up till 2020 on the new batch of songs and got them all kind of recorded and then we just it, it finished up the final mixes and COVID hit, and then we were like, okay, well, we'll do the album artwork, and we'll do the sequencing, and we'll TikTok wait for vinyl to be able to, you know, to become available, and before you know it, you know, three years have gone by, so, but it, with the, because of, of the thing, of the, just because of the way we actually needed every bit of that time, it turns out, <laughs> you know, because the album, the artwork that we just love the artwork and we love the addition of Matt's chat book that the Pochi chat book, where we stole a lot of the artwork from, by the way, from Alatesta. Um, it all worked out really in the, in the end. So, yeah. yeah. That's the interesting thing too, because it's not just an album as, as you're saying. I mean, there, there is this whole poetry side and, um, it, and it, does that, like I hate to do the obvious. What's the what's the album title about? But I feel like it really plays a part in here because it's called War Poems slash We Rested. Does that come in with the poetry, or was that there before? Like, how does that play? Like, it was there it before. Okay. It was there before. It's a lyric in the song "Volunteer," and the poems come about, and Matt can can take over for me. But uh, you know, we really love his writing, and he's a great poet, and and he's great when he does readings and stuff. It's like a live concert you know it's really captivating and yeah, we had originally last, tapped one of the Go last ahead. one of the last shows that we played of the, you know before covid was with matt's band for his new cd release and it was at like the, the band played and also he collected several poets to perform i don't know what do you call it? speak perform whatever yeah, perform. yeah and um that was like my first experience with that and it was amazing i was so entertained i didn't know that that i didn't know how it was like watching a performance like watching a band somebody getting up there and doing that it was really moving for me and so but it always uh reminds me that you know that was the last show that we did but sorry mike i interrupted you i'm sorry Oh, no, it's, it's totally fine. My kid's going like berserker with you know his toys in the other room anyway. So I had myself muted. 
but yeah, so we had asked Matt to write liner notes and then he got back a couple of days later and was like, maybe instead of me doing that, I could send one song to, you know, 10 different poets and they could use that as a jumping off point, create their own piece of work and send it back. And he had this whole kind of concept, but we, we had the record, the audio mixed, mastered, all that kind of stuff. And talking to Matt was like, was a thought of us just like, oh, what should the, the art and packaging be? Maybe we should have a little blurb. Let's talk to Matt. And then he really ballooned it into this whole giant concept piece. And I'll, what I'll let were you through. thinking, Matt? <laughs> I was thinking, what, a, what an amazing opportunity. But, uh, you know, when you guys asked me to write something for the record, and I, I did wind up writing something, but I wrote sort of the afterward to the chat book. Um, I just thought, like, I don't know. This record's great. Who the heck am I? Um, I can send one song to a bunch of different people that I know who for the most part are um, writers, they're poets and musicians. So most of the people that are in the chat book are writers and musicians in some way or another. Some of them um, are from, you know, quite important bands like uh, Lee Ronaldo from Sonic Youth. Um, and some of them have played in like, you know, their local scene for forever and ever. Um, and then there were a couple of poets that I got who aren't musicians, but who have written about music a lot, like uh, Hanif Abdurraqib um, and Jackie Clark, who used to run a site called Cold Front um, Magazine, where she did this thing called Poets Off Poetry, where poets would write about bands. So to me, it just seemed like a cool way to make this a, a sort of collaborative effort in the way that the band is a collaborative effort. I mean, you know, it's like when you when you have a, a song, right? There's there's the performance, there's the there's the there's the music with lyrics, and then there's the music, and all this stuff comes together to make something that's greater than some of its parts. And I really like the idea of making a chat book that is a sort of response to that record that does the same kind of thing. And I also like the idea of like playing with the notion of what what is the difference between song lyrics and poetry. Um, and, you know, for different writers, it's so really, uh, it's different. I mean, I think some people, their process is such that they could be writing lyrics or they could be writing poetry at any given time and they could sort of, you know, take a poem that they've written and put it to music and that would be it would be lyrics too um but there are a lot of writers i think that think of that as a really different process a really different kind of thing and i think we have um people that that have a lot of different approaches in this chat book um so it's really exciting to get to to do it i was you know really really honored that you guys asked me to to be a part of it and i think the poem the the book turned out beautifully it's this gorgeous little uh screen printed chat book uh it says you know war poems on the front and we rested and um i can't say enough about alatesta press which is uh chris mattingly and laurel leonetti uh, who actually put the book together and laid it out and then and they're they're where are they from where are they based so they were based at the time they were based in louisville and they've now moved to santa cruz which is where laurel is from excuse me yeah so they're so, in california so here i am in louisville right now thinking oh what a nice uh, local tie and that they've already yeah. jumped ship that's uh, yeah <laughs> and they the were way, there for a long time i mean i, I have Chris to is, say every time oh, my ahead. sister and i every time we we mention the words santa cruz we do Santa Cruz. <laughs> and I just did the evil, you know, the evil thing where you put your fingers up to your mouth and you spit. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> why? Mean, mean hippies. Mean, <laughs> aggressive little. No, I was just thinking of the last, the last breeder show there at yeah. that theater. And we had like half a day and I went to that skate park down the street and that park fucking ruled. Oh, are you allowed to cuss here? All you want. Oops. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. Yeah, I had like a, it was like a rare thing where there was a show and I could just dick around for most of the day. I just cruised down the street, skated this park forever, 
went back, did a show. It was like Santa Cruz was rad. I don't know what you're talking about. I mean, I, I'm not here to start any battles, but we got a pretty great skate park. I don't need to go to Santa Cruz for that. So it's yeah, uh, I've been right. to the Louisville one a bunch. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've been to that skate park. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, I mean, I, I like to have an original idea these days for an album is kind of hard. I can't think of another time that someone's done this. The idea that you have this record and then here we're going to give it to, to poets and they take it and they write this poetry based on the songs. And I've heard you all say in other interviews with the idea of possibly taking those poems to write other songs to yeah. like, yeah, yes, it, which we've already kind of started. Like I wrote a song and I, and I took one of Amber Tamlin's lyrics. Yeah, what was it? A dirt wish? Dirt wish, yeah. Just and I'm just oh. like, it can be anything, man. Like dirt if we gel. take a word or if we read the poem and then that if that sparks anything, we're calling that like inbounds. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, for sure. That's inbounds. the process. Bounds is a is a perfect way to describe it, Mike. Yeah, yeah and it's just a, it's a jumping off point. And so what Matt was talking about, collaboration or the origin of an idea or this sort of like the momentum that an idea can get, the process of creating, you know, I was just reading um, a, an article about Echo and the Bunny Men and that, and that whole lyric, fate up against your will, you will wait until, uh, through a thick and thin, you'll wait until you give yourself, like he said, he woke up and the whole thing was in his head. He said, I didn't write that. I credited it half to God. It was a dream. I woke up and that was the whole chorus. I don't write words like that. I, I, I dreamt it. Yeah. And, and so it's like, where does inspiration come from? Like, mm. is it from somebody else? You know, I guess what I'm getting at is it was really interesting to write something and then have someone else write something based off of that. And then to actually see it in process in kind of real time is really fascinating and humbling and, uh, yeah, I'm just fascinated by all of it, you know. Yeah. You know, the intro, by the way, to The Killing Moon was an accident, too, the guitar part, like that whole song. I read that same thing, yeah, yeah. that he was tuning, and the producer was like, dude, that's keep that in there. <laughs> we must have read the same thing. Well, I, I had, uh, I had, uh, I'm blanking on his name, the guitarist. I just had him on my show uh, last year. So, um, oh, sweet. Uh, so, uh, straight from the horse's mouth, as they say, I got that story. Wow. So. Nice. <laughs> Where are those moments on, uh, I should take that opportunity since we're here, where are those moments on this album? Because when I hear this, like like the, um, oh God, the the mood of exit music and those plunks on the guitar. I mean, we, we I hear a lot of artists talk about sort of music by accidents and you have actual music by accident and then you have, you know, music that you try to make it sound like it's an accident. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like where does yeah. that song fall in there? That's interesting because um, uh, the the song itself was purposely kind of I was I was totally going for that kind of mood of like a like a um, something from the mid you know the the monks what are those monks where they just mm, mm -hmm. something very sacral to to there was a lot you know, I was doing some elder care and there was some death and dying happening in the house and it was all very scary and upsetting and I but I, I had to be quiet as well so one of the things, things I wanted to do was just put down a demo guitar as a as a memo so I could remember you know to put it in there and just to play around with it and nothing sounded as good as that demo guitar which is just my Mac speak my that you know the speaker on the Mac catching that with no no amplification and it sounds really good i really like that how that turned out and that and it was really and, but you know it's like so obvious to me that sounds good and that should have been just leave it alone goodbye we'll go to the next thing but i mean it took you know weeks and weeks and a thought about oh, what am i gonna do with that oh yeah yeah gotta fix that like what am i fixing it's perfect but i think the the experience with the process of recording sometimes can tell you like hey it shouldn't be that easy you mm -hmm. nothing deserves to be a one take or first like you do one take and it's like is that really it and you think like no i better put the work in you know because yeah. for the, for the thought of like you don't want to be lazy you know sometimes like you get the best take you're setting up mics and just getting the sound right and then whatever you played when you weren't like trying 
ends up being better than the actual take when like the red light is on and you're like trying to do the part. You know, there's something, you tap into something different, I think. Yeah, and the same thing like with Medieval, which is that beautiful piano moment with Dan Dorf. How do you say it? Dan Dorf Jr. Dan Dorf. Um, I know that, Dan, by the way. Do That's, you really? Uh, yeah, oh. love Dan. Yep. So yeah. Um, yeah, I came into the studio, took a half hour. Uh, Mike had written that, that tune on guitar, um, but it just wasn't right somehow. And we were like, what are we doing? It's like, we just, we, what about a piano? And so we, Mike invited him to Candyland. And within, he said, I got a half hour. I could do a half hour. And we said, do it. And it sounds yeah. beautiful. But um, the bass on that, right? It just yeah. do some whole notes, Cal. You know, find the root, just do some whole notes, right? But no, how long did we spend on that bass? <laughs> uh, Dan, Dan played the piano in probably 12 minutes and then yeah. left. And then we probably spent 13 hours trying to figure <laughs> out four notes to play on the bass guitar. <laughs> it had to be just so, or the whole mood and song would crumble under the weight of a bass note hitting every downbeat on the note when the chords change. Bum, ba, dum, ba, dum. It just it couldn't be. It had to be finessed. Yeah, just maddening, but yeah. so much fun. Well, and it, it's that it it's kind of like you're saying. It's also that moment of 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 just giving in, like that moment of just giving in to the song. I think is is as you were as you were saying, Mike. Uh, just one of the hardest things to sort of realize and yeah. notice. You know, just yeah. um, yeah. I don't know, but thankfully you all That's did. A, that's a great way to put that, giving in to the song, because the song will absolutely tell you. Go ahead, Mike. That's what a good producer could do, but we don't, you know, we self-make all of this stuff. Yeah. So it's So you either, guys are great producers then, is what you're saying. Well, we take, <laughs> well, that's not what, I, what I'm saying is, it's, it's good to have, like, someone else tell you, like, stop right there. Don't do a single extra stroke. Like, it's good. Like, mm -hmm. I'll do a take, and I'm like... I hate myself. I hate my voice. I'm just going to just cut my throat right now. Kelly would be like, don't change anything. And then I'll say that, like, I'll say the same thing to her. And I do this with Matt, with his, with his band. I record his band a bunch, you know, I think a lot of artists have that. Um, you don't know when you're done or like, mm -hmm. since it's you playing it, you're like, was that any good? Or I, I can't even tell you just hear yourself in it so much, whether it's the guitar or the vocal, whatever it's hard to have the distance and know if like, is this working? Am I helping this idea come across or, or are my fingerprints all over it kind yeah. of? You know, I was thinking about like with poetry, when, when I'm thinking about these poems and, and I've been reading them and things, I like, how do you know when a poem is done? When is it done? I mean, cause I know that. Yeah, Matt, words, we're looking at you here. The <laughs> words in, in a piece of music Right. When the music stops, you shut up. So right. I mean, how when is a poem done, Matt? It's it's a total mystery, uh, and I think you know very often it's like when you get to that place where you're sort of following the the you're following the words and you're following the sounds and you're trying to figure out what the poem wants to be and where it wants to go, and the moment that the poem says to you, like now we've said the thing we need to say then you get out like then you're done it's like over um like an economy but, of words almost in that sense yeah i mean you know i mean often people think about poetry as being pretty economical with language and and very concentrated but i think that um i don't know everything comes to an end right i mean endings happen so it's like <laughs> And, you know, there, there are some, somebody said, you know, poetry is an art of beginnings and ends Ooh. and the middle is just there to tie it all together. And it's like, <clears throat> it's different than with, with songs, with music, you know? Um, but I think there is something to that idea that like a poem begins with a bang and it ends with, you know, another bang that's larger or it ends with a whisper, it ends with you know, a sigh or whatever, but it's like somehow you get to this spot and you're like, yeah, that's it. But sometimes it, you know, it takes, it takes forever to like get there and figure that out. And, and, and not, to be, not to be not to be cheeky, but there's also the sense of 
what you let us see. You could have written 30 verses. And like, but what I'm going to give you is the five that, yeah. <laughs> no doubt. Sorry, Mike, what were you getting at? Oh, just, I think Matt writes every single day, kind of no matter what it seems like. So um, are you still doing that poem a day? Oh yeah. I've been doing that for years. So you almost have to stop a poem because you got to start another one to, you know. Yeah. Right. Well, I also have these sort of larger, long projects that I work on too, but it's like, I like the idea of, of putting my head into a process and allowing the process to be the thing that sort of drives, drives the art, you know, in a way that like, r rather than having a bunch of intentions, just having a sort of process and not worrying about whether it turns out to be any good, you know, it's like, I'm going to do it every day. And I believe that if I do it every day, that some of them will be good. Not all of them will be good. Most of them probably won't be good. But I mean, it's the same in songwriting, right? Uh -huh. It's like you, you write tons of songs, you write tons of riffs, you write lots of lyrics, you write lots of melodies, and they don't, they don't all end up on the record. Some of the, they don't even end up as outtakes. They don't even end up as songs. It's just you're, you're engaged in that process that allows you to, you know, find your way. And even when you're making something that's not good, you're practicing for making the thing that's going to be good next. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I do love that. Now, now, Matt, did you take your own assignment? I mean, I know you did some liners, but did you also take one of the songs yourself? I didn't. I didn't. I, I really liked the idea of... Well, you kind of did. You kind of took the last song. Didn't I you? did. That's true. Yeah, That's yeah. True. That was kind of the afterward. That's the instrumental, yeah. right? But I, did, I didn't write... I wrote something that's not really a, uh, you know, um, traditional sort of poem. But it's definitely... I feel like the afterword is poetic, yes. but I don't know if it's a poem. Yeah. There's still the chance, though. You could, I mean, summarizing the full album if you need to, or or leapfrogging on the next leapfrog that happens. However, exactly. <laughs> right. exactly. Right. And so, but and, and you know, to 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 mention a few of those uh, those poets that you brought on. Uh, I mean, Lee Ronaldo, by the way, I have several of his books. Um, I love Sonic Youth, and it turns out that usually his his song ends up being one of my favorites. Um, no New York doubt. City Ghost and Flowers is one of my all time favorite poems of all. You know that's that that he did there. Sadie Dupuis, you know I, I'm a friend, a fan of hers too, and, and yeah. Speedy Ortiz and that whole and that you know her whole scene, Sad Thirteen, and everything. Yes, like you, you kind of mentioned a few of these. Were there any guidelines, or did you just say, "Here's a song, what inspires you"? Yeah, it really there really were not um parameters beyond um giving them the song and saying uh how can you use this as a sort of jumping off point to make something new. Mm -hmm. And I really liked what Mike was talking about before the the idea of like you know you get stuck on a phrase or you get stuck on a word, you turn it over and over again. And something comes out of that. And I mean, I always think about the fact that like, you know, poems are not made out of like, um, you know, deep thoughts or um, brilliant thinking. They're made out of words, right? So it's like, where are you going to get your words? And for these poets, they got words, but they also got, you know, inspiration from the music. Um, and, you know, if you read the poems that are in the chat book, I mean, it's really clear that they're responding to this songs. Mm -hmm. You know, really one, of the, yeah. uh, one of the, the, um, the poem uh, by Jeremy Michael Clark, who actually is from Louisville. Yes. He was in like some, some like old OG bands there, right? Yeah. Do you remember what, what those bands were? No, I don't right now. Uh, yeah. But they, I mean, they were like, you know, they were local bands, but they were like local hardcore bands. Oh, I mean, yeah. Like, like, yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, he, he, um, his poem assignment was volunteer. Mm -hmm. And so when I read his poem, it was called For All This. And I was like, so mad. I'm like, why didn't I call that song For All This? What a great title. It's interesting how he he picked that up and named you know and and, and that's like some, like i don't know throw i wouldn't have i wouldn't have captured those three words 
and held them up and said yes yeah you know but uh, until he did and i'm like of course those are great it's perfect yeah. it's great and some compliments by the way like starting off the album all i want is a cigarette and someone to pay rent <laughs> like <laughs> that sums up so much in one oh, line oh so true yeah <laughs> it's true not asking true, much it, true story what, what's that true story oh <laughs> and the music to that one too like there's the what, whatever's happening in the background what do you call it it's not a whale but it, it reminds me of like those 60s um you know whatever's happening i love every bit of that mike what, what have we got in star trek girls yeah <laughs> which part are you talking about the um all the big girls and the, the space girls that you know in the big outro section right Yep. Are you talking about the outro or uh -huh. the? Yep, it's the outro, the right? Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah. yeah, that's the Star Trek vocals. Yeah, that's what we call them. <laughs> I love that, and it, and it's you know I, I could go through here. I'm just looking at the track list and just going yes, yes, like Stoli. I mean, what a cool ass song that one right there is. Like every bit of it's. Uh, it's not a question. That's a car just a compliment. Stoli, cartoon heart. Like you're you're hitting on my. All the right buttons for me. Thanks. But now, Lee Ronaldo was assigned Stoli, which made Mike's heart just pitter pat. Yeah, thanks, Matt. You know what's up. <laughs> yeah, I did that for you, buddy. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and it's, it's funny, we, we also have like been trying to work with um, videographers or artists, mm -hmm. really. I mean, um, to develop, like, um, sorry, my cat is banging me in the face with the tail. Uh, to uh, to create a visual con component to all the songs. And one of the songs, Cartoon Heart. No, 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 that's wrong. I'm thinking about a different song. I was what thinking about Joe on um, Medieval, Embers. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, Embers on a Sleepwalk. All right, Kyle, we call that one. We call Embers Sleepwalk Medieval because the original... When it was originally on guitar, it sounded like uh, something that would be on, like, uh, you know, a lute. <laughs> you know, olden, olden times, you know. I like knowing that now that I'll have to go back and listen to it with, with that in mind. <laughs> yeah, it was a period piece from, you know, the 1400s, and we decided let's try it on piano, not yeah. this cat gut crap. See how it comes across. <laughs> But the videos, by the way, they do look great too. And it's just the, like this other component. Uh, I guess what I'm getting to is, is what you can do beyond the song and what you all have done beyond the song. I mean, this is, this is really what I, you know, some artists would call a, a multimedia experience, this record. Extravaganza. As a matter of fact, um, we uh, actually do have a multimedia extravaganza that we have planned. We, um, We've got a made- TV spectacular happening tomorrow night on Bandcamp Live. We've got an hour and something long film that we've made where we go track by track through the record. It's a listening party, you know, a day before the record comes out. Mm -hmm. And Kelly and myself and Laura King, who drummed and played on a ton of the tunes and helped us a ton, we're all just talking about, you know, reminiscing. Uh, just celebrating the process and our and just uh, since we're not doing any shows right now and you know we weren't sure what the world was going to be like when we were planning the album release and we weren't we would have loved to have a you know a listening party somewhere but Laura's in Chapel Hill Kelly's in Dayton Ohio I'm in Cincinnati so this is our way of kind of doing that and just celebrating the record and saying here it is and um yeah, so we're stoked on it. It's tomorrow at nine on Bandcamp Live at the R Ring page. And yeah, and it, it, will you have it? Uh, will you leave it up afterwards? Is it gonna? Let, yeah, yeah. yeah Bandcamp okay. eight hours, then we'll just put it on YouTube until the satellites fall. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I want that song title. <laughs> until the satellites fall. Yeah, stamped right here. Uh, uh, quickly ask this too, because as you say, no, no shows and everything, but uh, but there are breeders shows later, and I was only going to quickly hit there because because what Coachella and it's the last splash is that right? Is that what you guys yeah. are doing in full? Well, we're doing, and I actually wrote these down. My sister said, "Now are you saying that we're doing breeders show when you're doing all your 
publicity for this record. Are you are you plugging our shows? Like, oh, I didn't. I mean, look them up, Kim. So we do. We have a show in Nashville at three seventeen. I don't know where it is now, but it's somewhere in Nashville on March seventeenth, and in Atlanta, March eighteenth. And then we're doing something called the Innings Fest at three nineteen, and it. It seems very interesting to me. I'm very intrigued by it. It has something to do with baseball and music. And they are doing something. And I, I can maybe do a, I can do a report, you know, real-time reporter on the streets at the Annex Fest for me. Uh, just let me know if you want me to do that. I don't know what's going on with that. I think it's <laughs> weird. And then we're doing Coachella in April. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, 2023 is the 30th anniversary for last splash the record yeah. so there could be a release there could be some last splash shows we're just mm-hmm. leaving that the could be i like this could be could be you may be <laughs> hearing about that a little bit later yeah oh i would love that i mean obviously a classic there and by the way you know we we briefly talked i mean you touched on the last breeders record that i still love listening to all, all the Good. time and the, the amount of times even my wife and I will just say, wait in the car. I got business. <laughs> Commit Good. every I'm single so time. And, yeah. I'm so glad. Yeah. yeah. That's such, That's a, such great, a great line. Yeah. And a great yeah. album. And this is a great album. War Poems, We Rested. Seriously, as I said, I, I can't listen to this one enough. And I haven't read all the poems. I've only got the digital of, of what's come through. So I, I hope to read the rest of those soon because... Yeah, I, I just love everything that's going on here. So so thank all three of you all, Kelly and, and Mike and Matt. Uh, what you've done is an, a, an honest, honestly beautiful piece of art. Thank thanks. you so much. And thanks for letting us come on and share it. Anytime. Awesome. This is like the most fun, easy conversation I've had all week. So especially <laughs> with you guys asking questions to each other, I just sit back and go, please, more. I'm learning as well. Well, the, the idea of the interview, it's like, yes, Kelly and I, we, you know, we're stoked about the record, but we feel like what Matt brought to the table by including all of these other artists, it really, it's just like, it's so humbling to see how big he made. It's not just our record. So when we want to talk and gush about this and beat people over the head with it, it's because we want everyone to know like all of these people that contributed art to this thing it's not just a little zine that happens to be in the poly bag it's like and i don't even care if we say a freaking single word about the music it's like i want people to read this and and just talk about art and talk about collaboration and just talk and, about and yeah the, the and don't pan- forget don't forget sam uh, sam cormick she did these yeah. beautiful pen and ink this is, this is typewriter and she did these ink drawings in there. And so much of her art that's in this, we just stole, we stole their, we just stole, we, we lovingly borrowed. We <laughs> gratefully borrowed. Maybe that's a better way to say it. So but yeah. It's a conversation about inspiration and collaboration and creation. Yes. That's what, that's the story we're trying to tell. Not just like, check this out on Spotify. I know I was just plugging Bandcamp and all that kind of thing, but yeah, the, the larger conversation that, draws in every listener every every person is that that con that idea like get stoked on something do something Matt got these people to do this during the pandemic just for the hell of it you know what i mean like no one's making any money we're just making art and if it doesn't like get put a smile in your heart and give you something to set your course towards like i don't know what we're doing you know we are throwing, we are lobbying art bombs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank goodness. Thank goodness you're doing it. Thank God somebody's doing it. So you're doing it too, man, with your show and having people on. Like, what a platform, you know? This isn't just us. The story is not us. This is, it's like, it's bigger. Yeah. Well, you, you know, for a fan like me, you give me all of these reasons to not just dig in, but revisit over and over. And I, I know, I mean, you can tell this is one of those pieces that's going to give something different every time you dig into it with all well, of these thank pieces. Thank you so much, Kyle. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Yeah. yeah. And thanks to my guest. Also, thanks to you 
for uh, for checking out the episode in the series. Before you get out of here, hit that subscribe button. Again, uh, you get three brand new interviews every single week, new and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at uh, right here on YouTube or, of course, anywhere in podcast land, including iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podchaser, NPR, or WFPK.org as well. A great way to keep up with your favorite artists and discover new ones as well. Then after that, actually head over to WFPK.org. That's where I do a show, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern. It's an hour full of song premieres, music news, anniversary spins, bonus interviews, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern at WFPK.org. Consequence has your music and film news. You can also find me on the social media spots, uh, Facebook, Instagram, mostly on Twitter. All three of them, the address is at Kyle Meredith. Do hope you like and follow along. That does it for another edition. I'm Kyle Meredith. I'll see you next time.